Hey everybody, I'm certainly glad you've uh, joined us back here on the Moshix Mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And uh, today we are going to uh, document an adventure that uh, uh, Peter Jacob, one of the two people who ported uh, Rex to MVS together with Michael Grossman. Um, so Peter and I wanted to uh, write a Rex script, a very simple Rex script that would show the IPL time, uh, meaning the time the uptime when the when MBS was last started and so I thought it was going to be a very simple thing I was I'm so happy that we have Rex now MBS and so uh, my idea is to write a whole number of tools similar to what we have on Unix and Linux um, which would do one simple thing at a time such as uh, uptime who am I or uh, show disks etc and and so i wanted to start with uptime and it turns out to be one of the most complex things i could have started with and uh, uh, i i could get it to work on in assembler but uh, since i'm not very experienced uh, rex programmer especially because the rex that we have on mbs is somewhat different than the rex we have on zos i uh, reached out to uh, peter out in germany and the two of us worked over a stretch of about 10 days to get it to run it was much much more difficult than we both uh, had in had even anticipated and so this video is about documenting this journey to finding ipl time but let's go to the beginning. So I started simply enough by uh, researching which uh, fields I could get the IPL time from. And of course, one of the uh, areas with the most help you can get in MBS or ZOS is SMF. SMF is the systems management feature that records everything that happens within the system, every process that starts, every address base that starts, every job, every completion, every action is recorded. And we have seen before that uh, there is ways to go uh, look at the SMF through the amazing IMON that we have. And so, um, so I wanted to go and extract, extract the IPL date and IPL time from there. So I just went and researched the areas within SMF where that data is kept. So if you look at, if you search for MBS, SMF, IPL time and IPL date, uh, you should see uh, <coughs> I think it's called SMCA SMCA <coughs> well there is a program actually here but um, we're going to do this on our own Excuse me. Yeah, it seems to be here SMCA plus 340. So let's go look at this. Um, yeah. So it seems to be stored in SMCA, which the which is a table and yes, SMCA control block. It's a control block within the address space of each. With each, within each address space, and you can get there from CVT. CVT is the common vector table, which is the mother of all tables, which is always at hex location 10 in every address space. Um, by finding the address, going to address location hex 10 or 16 in decimal, you will then uh, find the pointing to CVT, and from CVT, at some point, you will find the SMCA, I assume. Yes, so at 96, 196 decimal. I assume this is decimal. Yes, as you can see here, this is decimal. So you can find it there. What was it again? SMCA. So C4 hex or 196. So I thought that going there, uh, we would then go and extract this information. So let's start to write a program. Why don't we do that? Ah, here it is. So, um, so this should be simple enough. Say, IPL time in decimal. So this the, the time would there will be stored probably in binary. So, but uh, for now, without any conversion to make it look pretty, we would just say that, and then IPL 
time. Let's say IPL date and decimal IPL date. And then we can say exit. And now we have the procedures here. So we say, uh, well, let's first uh, extract information. So we say CDT return address of location 16 decimal. And now we need to write this function address return convert to decimal. Storage is a, is a function within, built-in function within Rex that uh, allows you to extract stuff from storage. So argument one, uh, four bytes length. And this will return a pointer, return pointer, tech, decimal. Okay, so that should be simple enough. So this already would give us the pointer. the CVT and now that we have that we can say here uh, SMCA is return address of CVT right because we uh, what we do basically is like Tarzan Tarzan we go from we swing from table to table plus we saw it's plus 196 decimal right um, find SMCA SMCA okay and now we need to go and find the SMCA table And those tables don't really change, especially the earlier. Uh, if if they change, IBM changes anything. It's usually towards the bottom of the table. So, I feel time. Here it is. IPL time and IPL date. So it's three three six. So then we would say SMC. SMC time return um, memory dereference dereference uh, of SMC A plus uh, how much is it? 336 and that's 4 bytes as you can see here. Okay. So this will now dereference the memory from that location, which means you have to write the dereferencing function. Get four bytes time. So we write this now here. Dereference return, and we've had this in other videos about Rex that I've made in this channel. Storage. So convert to decimal. This will convert to this one. Uh, arg. And then arg2, which is the length. Return value. Storage. Okay, so let's count the one, two, three. One, two, three. This looks good. So now here we return the, the time and then SMC date return SMC plus what is it? Plus 340, also 4. So this is in binary and this is in this format. So we'll have to do some transformation there. But for now just let's get let's get the value. Also 4. Date format. Okay. Let's say binary. So that is it, and then we just we would just say here IPL time procedure 
IPL time decimal equals We'll do it like this then. Yeah. Since we reference it actually here, so um, the reference uh, SMC T I four this value, and then we we'll return. Turn IPL time decimal, and so now, uh, whenever we we say say here, it will go get the time here, which is based on this. And I guess we can just copy this whole thing and repeat it here for date IPL date uh, date. And we just have to say, oh, actually here is time, and here we say date. Okay, so I wanted to run this. This is a very simple program. And this would run uh, on on ZOS here. I'm connected here to the University of Leipzig ZOS with uh, ZOS 2.1. This would run. The only thing is that pointers are handled different in Rex on MBS and Z on ZOS than they are on Brex. Uh, but with a very small adaptation, this would work exactly the same. However, when we try to run this, uh, we can, we can actually do this by start going to 6 tx IPL info uh, rex IPL info invalid or unknown file. Why is that? IPL. Oh, it's IPL time. So let's run that. IPL time. And you see there's, it gives back a value, but that's a nonsensical value. So IPL time in zero, IPL date. So those values just are dead wrong. And, uh, and that's the problem with this. So I started to look into this and to my horror, uh, I, so we did look at OSVS2, MVS, SMCA. You can find some manuals here but this is uh, from well this is OS 390 we need to find performance tuning uh, there was one here yes so I, I went and found this very old manual from 1976 which is much closer to the version we have here. This is for MVS 3.7, and we run version 3.8, but they're very similar. And uh, we find that there is an SMCA. Where is the PDF version of this document? Let's find it, see other formats. Okay, let's get the PDF. And so there is an SMCA. And that's the problem when we're so used to modern operating system, we go back, we assume that everything was there. And so what I should have done, of course, is research this table before and not just assume just because we have SMF also in MBS as well as ZOS that it would be the same table. Uh, so if you go and research this table here, SMCA is here. And this is a great manual because it shows you the flow of information, how this tables, this control blocks are created. And let's go here. So as you can see here, the mapping is here, right? Takes us to, from the CVT, we can go to SMCA. And the manual is laid out that if you actually look for SMCA, you've progressively find out more. And so there are this, this values in the SMCA. But the longer I research this, Longer found out that the IPL time and the IPL date were not actually written into the SMCA. And one reason for that is that this was SMF in version 3.7 and 3.8 of MBS from back in the late 70s and early 80s. 
had very primitive SMF and one particular change is that uh, later on I think in MBS ESA uh, SMF actually became a vSAM file a vSAM map file and so there's way more information there but within this early version this was just uh, in in memory control block and so there was actually no such thing as IPL time okay that didn't exist in this version of SMF. So the more we researched, the emptier we got back. So we just couldn't. Uh, so this is SMF count. You get like very sim simple information such as uh, SMF, number of SMF records, etc. But nothing that would really give us uh, any indication of an APL type. And after very extensive searching of all manuals of OSVS2, 3.7, 3.8, whatever we could find on BitSavers. And by the way, BitSavers is such a great uh, help with, uh, with uh, tasks and adventures such as ours here, that I reached, that's when I reached out to Peter Jacob and together we tried to find any information uh, and we couldn't. There was absolutely no place within MBS where IPL time was written down. So we had to start to get a little bit more, uh, we have to start to get a little smarter about this. So this is what we did. Now we get to the next task. <laughs> and by the way, as I said, this took all several days of uh, detective work. Before I show you what we did next uh, on our quest to find IPL time and IPL date, let me just show you how the same program will work on ZOS. So uh, let's go here to all my data sets. Uh, here. the same program that we just saw maybe fields are called a little different but as you can see here exactly very similar uh, let's take the trace out uh, so we can just write exec and it will run as you can see here I get uh, in binary of course but I get 2019 01 the information is not perfect but uh, it's there and this is binary time, which needs to be converted uh, into uh, days and months and weeks. But uh, it's all there. And so uh, so that's why I was kind of, at the beginning, was very confused. And then I found, which was the one we saw, this, this script by one Mr. Mark Zeldin. And he has this IPL info, which is a very extensive program, which shows all, com which I, down I encourage you to download if you have access to a ZOS system because it's a Rex program that will uh, show you all kind of information such as last IPL was in, as we just saw, 2019, 2019, uh, 35 days ago. Uh, it, it produces this beautiful output which shows you from which um, volumes the IPL happened, the IPL address. Looks to me this is under ZVM. This, when you see something like this, an address like this, it's typically uh, because it was IPL'd on the CDM. Uh, yeah, and you also see it here the load module, the load par low parameter, uh, the name of the machine, which is a Z114 at the University of Leipzig. Uh, this is L part number six. So you can get all kind of information. And uh, by the way, all this information is within the address space on each and every address space. So everybody can extract this information. Uh, and by the way, it's very similar to Linux. Uh, just in Linux, you also have an interface going to the, through the sl uh, slash proc uh, virtual kernel interface where you can read and write and talk to the kernel. Uh, but here it's just mapped into the address space, but otherwise very similar. You can see all the extensive information reported by this tool. So, um, but we, unfortunately, we couldn't get this to run on MBS because the SMCA is just very, very primitive on MBS 3.8. So the question was begging, how do we get this information, right? And here we had to get a little creative. How do we know when a machine started? Well, uh, we know machine starts because, first of all, uh, address space is up and running, right? TSO is up and running, VTAM is up and running, or TCAM. Uh, you have Jest 2, obviously, and so my first idea was to say, well, whenever Jest 2 starts, that can be too far off from when the machine started. Yes, it could take maybe 2, 3, 5, sometimes 10, sometimes 20 seconds, especially if there is a cold formatting, but it's not going to be days, right? There's no point in starting MBS if you don't also start Jest because you can't really do anything without it. So um, 
so my idea was to write an assembler program, which I did, which uh, uses the um, becomes uh, goes into privilege mode, searches the address space of Jest2, and then reads from Jest2 the start time of Jest2. But that's a little convoluted because uh, it only works in assembler, and Rex can't uh, become a privileged address space. So uh, we what we thought we would do together with Peter is that I would we would call the assembler program from within Rex uh, and then the assembler program would switch into privilege mode into supervisor mode extract the uh, table uh, the information the IPL the start time information from the just to address space and then report it back and then Rex would just print it on the screen uh, but that was a little cumbersome and not really uh, not really very user friendly because it involves as I said uh, calling an external assembler program so but then we thought um, I did some more research so the first idea was to obtain information from and uh, research this uh, this handbook and get information about when does address space number one uh, start because uh, address space number one is present uh, of course in every system that's running and it's it's started immediately uh, after the nucleus has been set up so it would be a very good approximation of the IPL time. And specifically, I found that there was one uh, uh, control block there. Let's make this a little bigger. Called uh, OUXP. And this, I mean, I'm just making it faster, but this was a lot of hours of research in this topic because it's just unbelievable that people didn't think uh, that, that information such as when the last IPL was of the system wasn't very important, apparently. Um, but here within this field, uh, we see here user swappable uh, block and then user, uh, what is a storage control block. There is a, a time here, I, there is a field here called, uh, where is it? No, we need to find the OUXP, this is the SP. information from the OUXP. So OUXP points to OUSB. And of course there's a macro in assembler, which I did use. So all these control blocks are mappable, of course, from assembler and you have lots of macros to do that. So in assembler, it's really, really easy. Um, but let's see here. You can have here some interval. As you can see, that's the OUXP. Uh, SRM user extension block, that's what it means. So uh, here there is a field called this one, um, NQ residency start time. So since uh, NQ means um, NQDQ is a macro within MBS and ZOS that obtains a lock on something, whatever. And I'm not going to go into NQ, but since um, uh, address space number one has to obtain an NQ. This would be a very good idea to obtain the uh, IPL time from when this uh, NQ residency start time uh, started because it needs to start. Um, and that's in OUXP at position 60. Uh, and we can link to the OUXP from the ASCB. Oops, we lost it. Um, yeah. Um, Yes, this is pointed to by the ASCB OUXP field uh, within the ASCB, which is a well-known address space control block. So every address space has an address space control block. And from the CVT, you can easily get to the ASCB. And from the AS, so let's go look for it, ASCB, on our um, adventure here. Let's go look for it from the top. ASCB, where is it? to go all the way to the top and then look for it AS ASCB let's look for it so there's one way to obtain it but that's kind of a circle of reference uh, from the PCB right so um, from the PCB 
we can get to the ASCB. Um, the P PCB is the RSM, it's the real storage manager, a control block. From there, we can get to the ASCB, and from the ASCB, we can get to, to the OUXB. And to UXB, we can get the NQ residence in time. How long has the NQ been around? And that's a good approximation. Um, and so we went and obtained it from there. Uh, I did uh, each time what I did is I wrote an assembly program that would, would obtain it, and then uh, Peter Jacobs, of course, who of course much more well versed in Rex than I am, even though it's not really terribly hard, just to make sure we I don't make stupid mistakes. He wrote it then in uh, Rex to obtain the same field, and we did. And this is uh, the program that obtains it. So as you can see here, first we get the ASCB. Um, then, then we point from the ASCB to the OUX. Uh, um, we can obtain then a point from of, of the ASCB into this pointer. Then from there we go read the NQ uh, field, which is 60 down. And, um, and so this would do just a a, uh, a loop that would show 10 times the field that you would see here. It is 60 down. And uh, and, and you would show that it would not be the same time uh, each time. And here's the uh, calculate time since IPL. It's just a transformation of the data from binary into hours and uh, and and minutes and seconds. Uh, so we can try to run this, and then you'll see what happens. Uh, save this, and uh, let's go here. Okay, we run this and see what happens. Um, we get the addresses of those control blocks, ASCP from the ASCP, we go to the OUX, OUXP, and then we see that the time doesn't really change. Uh, you only um, get, it's a non-reliable source of uh, PL because as you can see here, it kind of, it kind of uh, this is, this is the time source here. It uh, it changes, and so that wasn't the reliable source of time. And um, back we went and uh, tried to research the topic. There's two ways that, of course, Google is always your friend. Um, I did uh, a research here, just with uh, time, and uh, and. Uh, that help because you get uh, through some fields like the one, this one here, and another one was uh, this. Uh, I did a, a search here, uh, Hercules MBS three dot MBS and uh, IPL time, and then I found uh, somewhere here. I found a uh, a very old discussion about this. Uh, where was it? Uh, uh, Gerhard. There was. Yeah, I think this was the discussion. Yes, so this is, this is the one. So here we have Greg Price. Who wrote the amazing uh, Paimon monitor? And if you see in the Paimon monitor, he actually has um, IPL date and time. And in this blog post from six years ago, from 2013 or 12, he describes how he gets his IPL time. And he refers to RMC T time of day for this event 38. Uh, what this is, is that there's this RMC T table, which we also found by just searching a, a time in this debugging handbook. Um, the RMC is the SR SRM control table, as you can see here, R RMC T is the SRM, SRM control table, which is linked to uh, by a field in the CVT. And uh, this gives us something um, which is time of day 
at the time this table was set up, which is very, very shortly after IPL. And so because the, this table has to be set up by the Nucleus to control things like uh, storage and scheduling, etc. So um, you see that it does set up the time of day uh, when the table is set up. And there's a whole discussion here. Um, it was probably a good enough time source to refer to that quoted. So to show the IPL time and date, I do use SMC, ADT for later systems, but I had to resort to this for LARC for MBS 3 or 8. So this is how Greg Price does it for his amazing, uh, for his amazing I want monitor, and so we decided to do the same thing and uh, and get the time of uh, IPL from that field. So let's go see. Um, I did write an, an assembler program to extract it, but that's easy with assembler, right? I mean, we wanted to do it with Rex because assembler is just too simple, and there's no way it's it's actually even though it's simple to extract the data, it's hard for other people to add to it and make the program more useful. So um, let's go here. And here it is. Um, so this is the program that Peter Jacob uh, came back with. Uh, it just refers to the RMC. So you can see it's first to the CVT, then to the ASCB. From there we go to the RMC, so which is uh, CVT plus 604. Uh, as you can see here. Sorry, that's okay. So this is how we get to this table, and within the table at 124, we find the time of day. Uh, where is it again? Let's look at it for it again. Sometimes. You see them and then we come hard to We had it there, I think it was one twenty four. Let's go up again. So you can see a time is a very important resource uh, in any operating system kernel or nucleus. Uh, there's so many uh, timers to keep track of. And I had actually started making a video about how uh, time is being kept on the S360, S370 and uh, Z architecture. But it's, a, it's such a complex topic that um, that I think very few people will be interested in it because it's just a very complex topic. Every architecture has its own timer and uh, time of day uh, uh, protocol. Uh, here it is, yeah, 124, current time of day, RMC T Todd. So uh, here we go, get it, RMC T, and then we need to obtain uh, the time that the RMCT was uh, created. So here he goes from Julian. Yeah, he does a, a transformation from Julian to Gregorian. So this is actually a very powerful, uh, very powerful routine that Peter Jacobs wrote, very extensive. So we can try to uh, uh, actually start it. And let's go in here. Oops, actually, I wanted to go six. Um, and you can see here, now we get it to run. So IPL time was on the 2nd uh, of the 20th of uh, February 2019 at uh, 554 in the afternoon, which I can confirm because I did that IPL. So you can see here, this, are, this works and it works reliably each time. Perfect. So this does run. 
And so we've got the IPL time. Um, can, let's look at the code again. Do we have the IPL date? Most of the routines are just actually for conversion. There's extensive, there's extensive uh, conversion you have to do to get the date right. There's sleep years and all kind of stuff. And um, so we got this to run. So finally, uh, we we found a field within MVS 3.8 that has a somewhat. I wouldn't say this is a very very accurate IPL time, but it is a, an IPL time we can use because it's approximate uh, and uh, and and quite soon after the real IPL. Real IPL is when you load the first when you f load the IPL record from uh, from a DASTY device which has an IPL record on it. Um, but then on, on a fast machine like what we use today to emulate uh, uh, a mainframe, it would be seconds, I mean probably even a split second from the real IPL time until the RMCT uh, TOD field is populated with the current time of day. So it is very, very accurate, I, I think, for our purposes. And, uh, and we can see that you know, with Brex we absolutely can, uh, we can uh, uh, get real data out of MVS 3.8 and it is now my intention to start using this and get more data out such as the IPL volume and uh, some of the other fields are interesting and uh, the idea is to show this on the Moshix mainframe as soon as people log in they will get a display of uh, when the last time this machine was IPL'd and some other relevant data uh, so uh, the idea is to do this but uh, we, we got this licked with this, uh, with this field and this shows that uh, when it comes to MBS, every, everything is out in the open. It's extremely well documented, even back in the 70s and 80s. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of uh, detective work and go look for stuff. Uh, Google, of course, is always your friend, as we can see here. Uh, but even before we got to this email, we already found the RMCT table. Uh, and there's usually there's many ways to skin a cat. And, uh, and this is, by the way, one for me personally, this is one of the... Uh, characteristics of an elegant system when there is I, 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 I always say an elegant system is something which gives you more than one way to accomplish something and that's why Unix and Linux is so elegant because there's always several ways to accomplish things at the shell or um, or with the commands and uh, and MVS is a very elegant system because there's always a way to accomplish something there's usually more than one option to do it and you pick the one that works best for you uh, and you can see here Rex uh, of course that's where Rex shines uh, when you want to do transformation of data simple transformation like here uh, this this is very typical Rex stuff uh, very beautiful code that Peter wrote here and uh, and one more thing that I think is beautiful is that here is a gentleman in Germany who is uh, uh, very well versed in uh, Rex and the mainframe stuff and here I am uh, in the US and we work on these things together the internet makes it possible the mainframe community makes it possible and the Moshix mainframe channel makes it possible so uh, this is this is another beautiful thing and uh, and uh, very grateful for that and also very grateful to Peter Jacob thank you very much if you have any questions please post uh, comments below this video if you have any improvements, uh, please also post comments below this video. You can find this code, of course, on uh, on the Moshix mainframe by going to Brex samples uh, uptime. Uh, you'll find this exact code here. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the Moshix mainframe channel yet, I would urge you to do so now. Thank you for watching and goodbye.